don't put it in the fridge. Put it exactly what this grown gentleman said. A lid in the back, put the bag up, put it in a kit in a jar or a Tupperware like lunchbox, and put it in a cool, dark cupboard. That's about as best as you can do it. Freezer, sometimes people go on holiday and get offered these amazing coffee beans, and I need to bring them back to the UK, and I need to store them, but if I, you know, they should go off, and it's like, put it in the freezer. Freezing anything holds it in stasis. So where, whatever it is, as soon as you put it in the freezer, it puts it in stasis. And it will not rot or go off until it gets thawed out. This be the problem. When you thaw out coffee beans, they're wet. The problem is, is the air is full of moisture. If we put that under a microscope now, an electric microscope, be covered in tiny moisture crystals. We put that in a freezer, they will expand. They will damage the bean. And when they thaw, they will crack and they will damage the bean from a point of view of moisture. So, although it's not terrible, there's no point. I wouldn't, you know, the, the jewel is out on that, so I wouldn't put it. So, exactly what he said, cool dark place. Now, anyone need coffee? Okay, I need a bit for me, because otherwise I can't show you how to taste it. Uh, weirdly enough, it's just like tasting wine. Is that enough? Right, so when you get, okay, what you're going to do, first thing is you're going to smell it. Now, smelling coffee, it's all right, 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 is short, sharp sniffs. So sniff, 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 sniff. Don't go like that, because you'll probably end up with lots of gunk down your throat, like me. Um, but what it'll do is you want to reload your, your sense of smell. Any more? How many more do we need? Four. You want to load up your nostrils. So by doing short, sharp sniffs, Loads, reloads, reloads, reloads. 70% of what you taste is from the aroma of something. All right? So what do you smell when you smell it? I know you're going to say coffee, because that's the, the dumb answer, but... Well, it certainly isn't what coffee you would think of from his shop. Right? <laughs> so he's going to hate you. Why did you pick on me? Right, but you get what I'm saying. That's not particularly roasty. It's not particularly dark. It's quite light. It's almost tea-like. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, so the flavour profile of this coffee, which so it smells like coffee. Uh, so this is an heirloom varietal from Ethiopia. Now heirloom means it's not been screwed around with, it's not been played around with. This is stuff that's naturally pollinated within Ethiopia. One of the only countries where you get this happening because it was where it was from. Um, the location was Oromia. It was grown at an altitude of 1,900 to 2,100 meters, which you've learned is correct for Arabica, so this is pretty good. And cupping notes. Apart from the fact it tastes like coffee, you should also get violet florals with blueberry, papaya, and cream. Why is it so It's like wine. So when you sip it, you want to take air into your mouth and suck it around your mouth, like so. Ready? I would do this like this. Huh? By doing that, you spray all the mice in your mouth and you get all around your tongue. Yeah, do, do the Guardian thing. Might give you a job, look quite good. And you'll get a totally different flavour to what you may think of as coffee in your barnet. So you need to get out the preconceptions in your head of what coffee does taste like. And we'll call this drink coffee because there's a whole new drink I'm bringing to you called coffee, okay? So this is high-end coffee. This is very, almost tea-like. Lady at the back who doesn't like coffee, have you tasted it? Did it not taste like coffee? But does it taste a bit tea-ish? Does it taste like something you've never tasted before? Well, that's exciting, isn't it? This is just you and me right now, baby. Right, tell me. Is this potentially something you could have an interesting learning about a bit more? Based on that taste. Oh, this is good. The conversion. So the depressing thing for you is that means you'll have to buy high-end coffee a lot, which is quite hard to find, unless you go to her store, because guess what? She bought it here for you. Right here, right now. It's all going to happen right now. Oh, the party on. Okay, but you get what I'm saying. Unfortunately, it's very hard to find quite high-end coffee in the supermarkets because they don't really do it, as you very rightly said. It's more roasted for that more homogenized what people think they want taste. The one-pound McDonald's hamburger scenario again, okay? And again, you're not going to find it in your Starbucks, Costas, and Nero's. They just don't do it. 
There have been a few coffee shops open recently that are at least going down the direction. Uh, Harrison Hole, Tesco's, yeah, no? Ever heard of Harrison Hole? No? Oh my God, they haven't done very good marketing in Northampton, have they? Um, so basically, Harrison Hole is a brand that was started with money from Tesco's, and they at least go down the line of what we do. It's not quite as good as the independents, but certainly a massive step towards it, okay? So being more selective about your buying, and you're getting into this scenario then of purchasing that coffee because it tastes like that, and I'm going to enjoy that. Who drinks whiskey? Who's got whiskey at home? Who has started to collect? It's funny how it's always men. Um, who thinks, I like that whiskey, and that's that one. And then I like that Speyside whiskey, because this is vanilla -y and I'm going to have that. And you've got a choice of whiskies, yeah? And when you do want a whiskey, you're going to go, hmm, what do I fancy tonight? You know what I'm saying? That frame of mind, that's exactly the frame of mind you would be in if you had two or three of these at home. Do you know what I'm saying? Oh, what do I want? Do I want light? Do I want dark? Do I want to go? And that's what's quite exciting about our industry, is the ability to produce a product that is so wildly different, OK? Now, time, we're getting towards the end of it. I wanna see if there's any questions. I just wanna touch on your question about flesh. Um, this, uh, the coffee flesh uh, rots, and in many countries is used as a bio mulch fertilizer. Um, but we have actually, in our industry, started to use it a lot, and when it's called cascara. Has anyone heard the term cascara before? No? Oh, and you were doing so well. Right at the end. Uh, so cascara is really nice. So again, quite heavy in terms of caffeine yield. Tastes a bit like candied orange fruit in terms of, and you can brew it as a tea. We actually use it as an ingredient in a drink that we are producing at the moment, um, which is called acid rain. And it is, yeah, it's kind of, uh, it's a ginger beer, cascara infused chili drink, which literally rips your face off and spits down your neck in a good way, okay? Um, but it's coming to press at the moment. It, it, we've made it for about four years. It's really, really potent. Uh, does anyone eat chili? You know what Scoville ratings are? Okay, this is two and a half million Scoville. It's quite punchy and gingery and full of caffeine. So it burn your face off, get you really off your head on terms of caffeine. It's like the perfect drug. This is the best thing ever. So you need to look out for that. That's being launched at the moment. Um, so yeah, you can use it for stuff. Any other general questions about coffee? My new disciple here, hello. Yeah, it's perfect, because I did want to talk about decaf, and you've perfectly, it's okay, decaf coffee. Anyone have to have decaf? Yep, yep, there's nothing wrong with decaf. Don't, don't, don't be shy. Obviously, Starbucks likes decaf. Okay, so decaffeinated coffee, really quickly. Nothing wrong with decaf coffee, as long as it's good decaf coffee, which is quite hard to find. Um, does anybody know the three processes of decaffeination that can be used? Anyone take a wild guess? No? Okay. So... The two really good methods of decaffeination are water method or carbon dioxide extraction. CO2 extraction is fantastic. Minimal damage to the coffee See, So this is done at green stage when they're actually processing the coffee way before the roasting. All right? You need to wash the, co the caffeine. You need to get the coffee caffeine out of the seed. So carbon dioxide treatment, effectively the CO2, layman's terms, burns away the caffeine. Very gentle on the, on the seed, on the bean, which is great. And it doesn't really affect the flavor of the coffee. So CO2 decaf, top on. And I think, yeah, that's a CO2 decaf, so perfect, all right? But I would say it's such a selling point, it'll say it. If it doesn't, it won't. CO2 has one problem, though. The machinery is bloody expensive. And f coffee farms don't have a lot of money. So only the bigger ones, not the massive ones, but only the ones that are a bit more established can afford the process. Okay? Water method, typically called Swiss water method, Mexican water method, this, but effectively, it's a water method. So you're leaching you're going you're gonna to soak it away, all right? Very cheap, very easy to do, but takes time. So it's kind of going back to our washed versus natural processing. So farms can do, but again, gentle, a little bit more on the flavor. It takes a little bit more of it out because it's washing away flavor, but not a lot. We're still talking 85, 90% of what was there in the first place. So water method is quite common now. If you go into your Waitrose, your M&S, 
and the other ones, whatever they are, you know, Tesco's, Sainsbury's. Maybe if you look at things like Union Coffee, which have started to appear in some of them now, or some of the better premium brands, it might say, uh, water method decaffeination. Fantastic, yeah, go for it. <laughs> but of course, the vast majority of decaf is done using chemical extraction. Now, the chemicals they use are like ethanol-based, benzene, all sorts of horrible words. Um, it's been banned in Switzerland, amazingly enough, but not banned anywhere else because it fuels big business. Big business is great, and obviously we can extract caffeine. Do you know where a lot of caffeine goes once it's been extracted? Yeah, yeah, but where does the, most of, where does the bulk of caffeine get reused? No, no, it's the last place. Um, if you're tired and you want a caffeine boost, take an ibuprofen because the pharmaceutical industry has pretty much all of it. There is more caffeine in your household drugs in your medicine cabinet than there will be in any Red Bull or caffeine because caffeine gets stuff into your system really quickly and obviously they want to get medicine into your system really quickly to stop your headache. So you use caffeine as a carrier because once you stimulate it, Loads of caffeine in, in ibuprofen and codeine and blah, 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 blah. Uh, Only paracetamol, I think, doesn't have it in, unless it's one of these played around with paracetamols. So, yeah, that's kind of where it goes. The problem is, as the Swiss have found, is it can leave latent toxicity within the coffee bean itself, which is not great for your body. And I've spent the last four weeks looking at what big business sprays on our food, and you don't want to know because it's scary. That's a whole other subject. So I obviously wouldn't recommend chemical extraction decaf. It also kills the flavor of the coffee. So chemically extracted decaffeinated coffee tastes bleh, and it's not good for your body and it's kind of a bit pointless. Ironically, as much as these studies were put and shelved, the Swiss did a private study into effects of decaffeinated coffee on pregnant women. What do all pregnant women drink? Decaffeinated coffee. Growth defects and problems were detected in the first trimester of a child being grown with prolonged um, use of chemically extracted decaffeinated coffee. But these things were hidden and, and think we don't talk about that because that would be bad for business. So again, I'm only giving you the tools to make your own decisions. I'm not saying you shouldn't drink at Starbucks and Costco. I'm not saying you shouldn't drink chemical decaf coffee, but at least you know, all right, so you can make a decision. And as you very rightly said, if it's a high street bought coffee, if it has been CO2 or water method, they're probably going to talk about it because it's a good thing to talk about. This is particularly good, actually. This is a benzo region, Sadamo coffee. What, have you got any decaf over there? Yeah. Swiss water method, Costa Rican. So it's all good. It's all good. Any more questions about anything? Yeah, not, yeah, I mean, you can have stuff on for a while, actually. I mean, generally, when greens are brought in, it'll go into roasteries. I mean, we were at a roastery a couple of weeks ago. And they've had stuff in for, like, three or four months just waiting to be roasted. It keeps quite a long time, greens, because it's when you roast coffee that you start the chemical process. Um, the coffee roaster, dum, 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 going around that's really hot, doesn't roast the coffee. She's like, what? Doesn't, the, the heat of the roaster doesn't roast the coffee. The heat of the roaster starts a chain reaction within the coffee bean that roasts itself. Does that make sense? So they call it the little fire. That's the name. Did you know this? Oh, okay. I'm teaching you something now. Okay, so basically, these bad boys are seeds. They're full of energy and power. And if you can do something to trigger a process, that's effectively what it does. And different roasters, some are what we call direct heat. Some are convection, so they use hot air. Some you, what, what do you use? Do you use convection? So yeah, so hot air, very efficient, very even roast. Hot air, basically a great big tumble dryer. But direct heat, things like probats and D-Trix are gonna be using flame, and then you get infrared ceramic panels, all different ways of doing it, and that changes the roast. Because the ones on the outside get a bit roastier than the ones on the inside, you know, and it just changes, it's just personal preference. But it's when these get to what we call, have you also got your coffee bean, by the way? Or we all throwing it away. Look on a coffee bean and you'll see there's a little crack at one end of it, a little fracture. Yeah? So when you dump the greens into a coffee roaster and it goes, jun, 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 yeah? Have I got to go? Oh, sorry. Um, see, I can talk forever. Yeah, but they, they want to know. Um, basically, they, they start to go a sort of cinnamon colour. 
round, 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 round it's going. And then they start to go into what we call first crack. And that is that crack. And that is at a point where the coffee bean goes critical. It can't hold its energy anymore and it bursts. And effectively the gas trapped inside pops out of that, that little crack. And it's from, it sounds like a little popcorn machine going round. It's great. And that's when it smells lovely, really roasty. That's typically when we would start the roast profile. Your one to two to three minutes. And it will go quite quickly. And then they pull a lever or press a button and it all drops into a cooling tray and it all goes round and then the hot cold air is pulled through it.